Welcome. In this video, we will try to understand how the PMO denies the RTI plea seeking information on PM Cares. Now, PM Cares was formed uh, because of the present COVID-19 situation. So, because of COVID-19 situation, there are lot of economic disruption to Hence, in order to ask the citizens, the uh, people of India to contribute like willingly, voluntary and do a charity towards uh, to provide cushion for the impact being suffered by the vulnerable people, the PM Cares was formed. But what happened, there are various questions and controversy related to it that why PM Cares need to be formed when we already have the PM Relief Fund. Such kind of question were in uh, place and because of it there was a plea asking for the RTI. So RTI plea was signed and uh, been submitted to provide the information regarding the whole structure of PMO and the fund and transition. But what happened right now because of which it was in news is that the PMO has de denied the information. So Prime Minister office has went ahead and denied the information to be asked in the RTI. Now what the reason they have quoted is that uh, disproportionately divert the resources of the office. So what they have come up the PMO has given a reply for the RTIP and they have says that uh, this will uh, divert the resources disproportionately which means that uh, in order to provide the information under the RTI they have to go through many routes which will be like uh, resources would be very difficult to at this point of time provide for providing the information asked under the RTI plea. So these are the few uh, grounds on which the PMO denied the request. Now, but if you go back and see the High Court judgment and multiple order of Central Information Commission have previously held that under RTI Act, this rationale can only be used to change the format of the information provided and not deny it altogether. So for an example, if you feel like, okay, the information being asked, the format in which it is being asked is too cumbersome to provide uh, the resources with. So you can just come up with a simple information, simple form in which you will just provide the basic information which is being asked but you cannot deny the information altogether so this is again going to be contested whether it was right from the PMO side to deny the information altogether or not because the previous judgment from Central Information Commission has said that okay, you can uh, definitely if there are uh, crusts of resources you can change the format but you have to provide the information. So that was a little bit background. Now when we are at topic, uh, remember to go to your Lakshmi Kant and check for CIC, Central Information Commission. In 2019, there was also an amendment to the Chief Information Commissioner. His tenure and terms of condition has been changed. You have to go and check what was the changes all about. And also try to see the roles, function and how they are selected. So you have to know the role, function as well as who participate in the selection procedure of CIC. So these are the few things that you have to go back to your polity book of refer your Lakshmi Kant and figure it out. It's important when you are uh, like going through your current affair news, it's important that you also have a note of the static portion. So let's move forward and try to understand what this RTI Act is all about. So Right to Information Act was passed in 2005 and it was a watershed moment in the polity of India where now the citizen could ask for the information of public authority authorities which has not been so transparent so far. So this is uh, considered as one of the watershed moment and has provided a lot of power within the hands of citizens who could ask information from the public authorities. So this act of Parliament of India which set out the rules and procedure regarding citizens right to information. So what this act has in its like the whole framework and the clauses, it will provide with the rules and procedures. So how the citizen could file an RTI, which offices are under the ambit of RTI, who all in within what days they could get the RTI uh, response, what is the fee they have to provide for it, what are the forms. So all these things are provided as clauses of RTI 2005. Now, the public authorities are required to make disclosure on various aspects of their structure and functioning. So, what RTI could be filed for? 
any citizen of india could file an rti for public authority and could ask the disclosure on organization function and structure like for an example if the rti was on pm cares they, they were asking what is the organization how it was set up what are its function specific function then they could also ask about power and duties of its officers and employees like under pm cares for an example what kind of powers are rested with the officers who is going to disperse the fund then also the financial information which was specifically asked by this rti plea in terms of pm cares like how much fund has been provided under the pm cares and how that fund is going to be utilized for the covid 19 impact so these are the few things the public authorities need to be answered now the whole intent of such somoto disclosure is that public should need minimum recourse through act to obtain such information now uh, ideally section 8 of rti section 8 of rti says that sau moto disclosure like the public authorities by themselves should disclose the above asked information why because so that the public don't have to go into the plea mode they don't have to like go for file a form file an application submit it wait for response so instead of the uh, like providing all the minimum uh, information could be done through the public authorities themselves though over the year it has been realized that not many uh, authorities and come forward and provided the so moto information so though it was a part of the act so moto information on ground has not been provided by the public authorities now when the so moto information is not provided citizens could file an rti plea could fill a form and ask for all the information they need from that particular public authority now the intent behind the enactment of act is to promote transparency and accountability in the public in the responsibility or in the working of public authorities now think from those perspective that a public authority and office is working they have some certain fund allocated them by the budget but uh, the citizens or the beneficiary are not getting any benefit so because of it the beneficiary are now entitled and go ahead and ask those official that you are accountable to provide all these benefit under this particular act so right to information provides such kind of power to the citizen and it is a very empowering act over a period of time supreme court has also included right to information as fundamental right under the article 19 so it has been considered as a fundamental right under article 19 which means it couldn't be denied so these are the few things you have to know about the rti now when we are at this topic let's also try to understand the background why so many pleas are being signed so prime minister citizen assistance and relief in emergency situation short formed as pm cares fund was set up to accept donation and provide relief during the covid 19 pandemic as mentioned earlier covid 19 has caused a lot of social and economic disruption and it was like uh, calling the citizens of india to come together and help the more vulnerable section for that matter of fact after the announcement of pm cares fund an rti application was filed asking the pmo to provide the fund trusted and all government order notification and circular relating to its creation and operation so the rti please asking how this particular pm cares was formed under what acts of it is it a society under companies act is it a, a statutory body it is an executive body is it a charitable front so what kind of organization it is how it is set up whether it was through government executive order or how particularly it was set was being asked by the rti now the petition was filed regarding the need of pm cares when the pm national relief fund was already existing so this is a very pertinent question which has been asked since the time it has been like adopted that why there is a different fund when we already have pm relief fund the major response would have been that to provide the swift dispersal of fund under pm cares for the immediate requirement of covid 19 but no concrete information has been provided by the pmo so far and hence the rti was filed but pmo has denied it so that was the whole background and the context of this what you have to know from your upsc perspective is obviously the cic as mentioned earlier rti its various fact also check who could who are under the uh, ambit of rti 
recently like last year itself uh, chief justice of india was also included under the uh, ambit of uh, rti check what all other public authorities are under the rti so these thing you have to know from your upsc point of view also how pm care is formed what kind of a body it is so these kind of things you have to know so i hope you have understood this video if you have any doubt feel free to comment thank you